A great way to share Excel dashboards is to embed them in a web page where the interactivity is retained, but users can't download the file, unless you allow them to. All you need to do is save the file on OneDrive or SharePoint and grab the embed code, which you can paste into a web page. Now there are some differences between using OneDrive personal accounts and OneDrive for business or SharePoint, which I'll cover in this video. All right, let's get started. We'll start with OneDrive for Business, which uses the same process as SharePoint. If you don't have OneDrive or SharePoint, you can get a free OneDrive personal account at onedrive.com, and I'll be covering the steps for OneDrive personal a little later in the video. Now this is my Excel dashboard file. The first thing you'll want to do after saving your file on OneDrive or SharePoint is define a named range for your dashboard area. And you can see in the name box, mine is called dashboard. To name your range though, just select the cells and type the name in the name box up there and press enter. That's just going to allow you to specify that only those cells are displayed in the web page. Now in OneDrive for Business, as you can see here, I've got my file and you can see the share icon there. If we take a look in SharePoint, you can see we have that same share icon. So the experience for OneDrive for Business and SharePoint is the same. I'm going to use OneDrive for Business for this example. So to grab the embed code, we click on the share icon and then you want to edit that link. You can click on this up here or you can click on the down arrow and go into the link settings. If you're embedding the workbook in a web page, which I am, then you want to set permissions to anyone with the link. However, it's possible that your SharePoint admin has blocked this option to allow anyone with the link to view the workbook. If that's the case, you'll need to consult with your administrator to get them to fix that. Now, if you want to prevent the workbook from being downloaded, you'll also want to check this button here, block downloads. Of course, if you want your users to be able to download it, then don't select that. Instead, allow editing. This is a read-only dashboard. I don't want anyone to be able to edit it or download it, so I'm selecting block download and I'll click apply. And then all I need to do is copy the link. It's copied to my clipboard and then go into notepad, paste in the link. We need to add some HTML tags to allow this to be embedded in a web page. And we need to tell it that the source equals this URL. So we need a double quote around the URL. And then at the end of the URL, we need to add the action code and close the iframe. So we do that with an ampersand and then the action equals embed view and WD BI preview equals true. Close the double quotes and close the opening iframe. And then we need to close the iframe altogether. So it's forward slash iframe and then the greater than sign. So that's my embed code. I could go ahead and pop that into my web page and load the embedded dashboard. However, we can add further parameters to the iframe that control how the dashboard's displayed in that web page. For example, we can specify the size using width and height tags. So width equals, and then in double quotes, the pixels, so 710 pixels wide, and the height equals 920 pixels. So they're my width and height parameters. I don't want any scroll bars on my dashboard. That's why I've chosen that height and width, but you might have to work with a bit of trial and error to get the height and width as you want. Now we can also control how the dashboard appears with parameters which get appended to the end of the URL with ampersands. So starting with the first one, I want to add interactivity for the slices. So it's WD allow interactivity equals true. That's my first parameter. And I want to hide the sheet tabs, so that's WD hide sheet tabs equals true. And I want to reference just the cells called the dashboard, so that's item equals dashboard. I also want to hide the headers, so that's a WD hide headers equals true. And lastly, I want to set the active cell to one that's at the bottom left of the defined range, just so it's not intrusive on the face of the dashboard. So that's and active cell equals A35. Now there are a few more parameters you can specify and you'll find them in the written tutorial, which is linked to in the video description. Let's take a look at the web page where the dashboard's embedded. I've already loaded the code and you can see my dashboard here. I can interact with the slices and you can see it works just like it does in Excel. 
Now, if the dashboard's not responsive, you can just refresh the web page and it should start working. At the bottom of the dashboard, there's a black bar called the viewer bar, and it contains some icons that will differ depending on whether your file is saved on OneDrive for Business or SharePoint or OneDrive Personal, as well as what sharing options you allowed when you copied the link to the file. Now, the first one is the Excel icon. It opens office.com, nothing exciting there. The next icon enables the user to refresh the connection to the source file and get updates. However, it doesn't appear to do anything for me, so you can always refresh the web page to get updates. The last icon enables you to give Microsoft feedback about the embedded spreadsheet, although when I click it, nothing happens either. This button seems to only work with OneDrive personal embedded workbooks. Now, one thing I should make clear is if you use incognito mode or Safari, you won't be able to see embedded workbooks saved on OneDrive for Business or SharePoint without logging in. So it's best to avoid incognito mode and Safari. The other thing is if you get the embed code via the file tap and then share and embed, then users will be able to download the file. So I don't recommend this method unless you're happy for people to get a copy of your file. Okay, that's the experience if your file is saved on OneDrive for Business or SharePoint. Let's move on and take a look at OneDrive Personal. And at the end of the video, I'll cover the limitation differences between these options. So stay tuned. The process for files saved on OneDrive Personal accounts is slightly different. Now I'm going to be using this file here, specifically the area called Slicer Chart. So we can see it incorporates the slicer and the chart below. Let's pop over to my OneDrive personal account. You can see that here. Here's the file containing my slicer chart. To get the embed code in OneDrive personal accounts, we right click and then we go down and choose embed. And that opens a pane over on the right hand side. We'll get a preview of what we're going to embed. And below that, we've got the iframe code. We can just go ahead and paste that into our web page or you can click the customize how this embedded workbook will appear to others. And let's go in and do that. And we can set some parameters and more formatting. First of all, we can choose what part of the workbook we want to show. So I want this range called slicer chart. Let's select that. And you can see the preview here that we're going to get. Next, I can hide the grid lines. Now I've already done that in my Excel file, so it's neither here nor there whether that's selected. You can also hide row and column headers. That's grayed out at the moment, but that's what I want anyway. You can choose to include a download link. I don't want anyone to be able to download the file, so I'm going to deselect that. However, you'll see later that this is useless with the iframe code. Next, we can let people sort and filter. Well, I need that because I've got slices that I want them to be able to select items in. You can let people type into cells and their changes won't be saved. In this workbook, I don't have any need for them to type into cells, but you might have data validation list, or you might want them to be able to enter values in cells that then evaluate formulas. I don't need it here, so I'm going to leave it unselected. And then always start with this cell selected. You can see it's defaulted to the cell I had selected in the file. I want to hide the selected cell somewhere behind the chart, just so it's not intrusive in my report. So I'm just going to hide it behind the chart. Next, we can set the dimensions. I can change them here. There is a limit to how big you can choose the height and width in these fields, but you can also change it in the code itself and there's no limit there. So I tend to change it in the code and this is the pixel height and width. And lastly, I have two types of code to choose from the embed code, which is the default or JavaScript. Both of them have height and width options that you can see there and there. However, there's some quite fundamental differences between going with the iframe embed code or the JavaScript, and I'll show you both. We'll start with the embed code. Simply copy it to your clipboard and then paste it into your web editor. I've already done that, so let's take a look at the end result. The first thing you'll notice is we've got the slicer and the chart as I specified. I've also got these scroll bars, and if I scroll across, you can see it's displaying far more than just the range that I specified. There seems to be some sort of issue with the way the web app renders the workbook when it's in a OneDrive personal account. I can select items in the slicer and you can see it updates, allowing the user to interact with the chart and the slicers. The viewer bar at the bottom also has some additional icons that differ to OneDrive for Business or SharePoint. 
The first icon launches Excel Online, but it doesn't open the workbook unless you're the owner and you're logged into your OneDrive account. The next one is supposed to refresh the connection to the workbook, although it doesn't seem to actually do anything for me. The third one allows you to give Microsoft feedback about your experience with the web app. Next, we have information about the workbook. So here we can get the URL to the workbook. You can copy that and paste it into a new tab in a browser and you can actually open the workbook, download it and save your own copy. So you can see there's no security here, even though I selected do not allow users to download. You can also get the embed code and you could use that in another web page. The last icon allows the user to open the workbook in Excel Online and view it in its full size. So again, once they open it in Excel Online, they can save a copy and download their own version of the workbook. So it's not secure. So you can see that with the iframe embed code with OneDrive personal accounts, there's no way to secure the file properly, despite choosing to not include a download link. However, the JavaScript offers more security. So let's take a look at that option. Click on the JavaScript and you simply copy the code and put it into your web page. I've done that already, so let's take a look. So again here we can select items in the slicer. Works exactly the same way, but the massive benefit to using the JavaScript over the iframe embed code is we don't have any way to get the URL to the workbook or open the workbook in Excel Online in full screen view. And that means users can't download your file. Of course, if you want them to be able to download the workbook, then go with the embed code. If you want the workbook to be secure, then use the JavaScript. And you might be wondering, well, what if they edit the HTML and get the URL out of that JavaScript embed code? You'll be pleased to know if even if they try that, when they load that URL, it's just going to give them a load of gobbledygook. It does not download the workbook. Now you may want to restrict who can see your reports. In which case you could add another layer of security by putting it on an intranet site that's only available to employees, or you could have your web developer add password protection to the page. I'm not a web developer, so I'm not going to cover any of that. With OneDrive for Business or SharePoint, you can embed a file up to 10 megabytes in size with up to a thousand concurrent viewers. However, heavy traffic on the embedded workbook might result in some viewers being throttled and the availability of an embedded workbook can be impacted by the number of embedded workbooks in the data center or tenant. So just something to keep in mind. With OneDrive Personal, the limit is only five megabytes. I couldn't find any documentation on the number of concurrent viewers, but I suspect it won't be more than a thousand and probably would be less. Keep in mind that OneDrive Personal embedded workbooks using the embed code are not secure. However, OneDrive Personal embedded workbooks using the JavaScript code are. So keep that in mind if you don't want people to be able to download your workbooks. I hope you found this tutorial useful. You can check out the written step-by-step -step instructions at the link in the video description. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more. And why not share it with your friends who might also find it useful. Thanks for watching.